What's up, my precious little pack, and welcome back to Viga Conflict. The Ashes event has come to a close, and I think it would only be fair for me to get a few last jabs into the event. Overall, I'm going to say it was a miss right off the bat, and it's going to be a hit or miss type video. And I'm going to say it was a miss because they could take the time between primary events to change the targets up a bit, and I'm not saying increase the range and make sure players take guaranteed damage, I mean reconfigure how the fleets are, maybe remove a few ships in one and increase the strength of the overall fleet so you, you still take around the same amount of repair time, reduce the range of them, make it a little bit more fair, but do something to make it a little bit more entertaining and engaging across the board, and just don't go for the stupid range on certain fleets to where they always get the first shot in even if you have destroyers unless you have a carrier in which case then you get first shot in which doesn't really matter for much for very long. Uh, the prize list is... I can't say it was the worst I've seen but it's definitely not the best. The credit items, they're more than welcome especially because of how long most of the stuff takes to fit and the credits are all instantaneous and going all the way down through them we got credits for just about everything but I won't know how the ship plays till after I set up my first one which is in production and when I have the first one all set up and fully rigged with what I think I'll leave as the fitting I'll go ahead and I'll play with it a bit and see what I can do and see just how fun it's going to be but this isn't just all about the Ashes event. Yes, it is a miss and mise because, again, the targets could be more varying and they could be more balanced and focused on encouraging players to actually have an active hand in the combat. And for the fleets to do, well, kudos to those fleets, but not to the creators of the game that made said fleets because, let's face it, those fleets are a dime in a dozen. Well, let's go ahead and let's talk about the upcoming mobilization. The prizes are all individual fragment parts. Well, the individual blueprint pieces, as always. The... Oh, this is the big one. Okay. We're finally getting the blueprints for each of the... Xeno weapons for the Altarian faction. Their faction has come to the close and we're in the next group. So that's a bit weird in my eyes and a little bit messed up that it's taken them this long instead of actually releasing them with the ship's weapons as they came out. And only having a repeatable blueprint for the Xeno Epsilon Echo Cannon. Granted, I know each of the previous ones never had a blueprint, but I think it'd be nice to be able to get back on track and start producing blueprints of those things. But aside from that, this is basically a the exact same scenario as the Ashes event prize list. Everything in here is credits. However, there's no weapons. However, we do have Altarian time tokens, and we can pick up six 24-hour ones. You can take off six days and six days worth of refits. So if you carefully decide a few builds... Oh, plus on top of that, before I go any further, we actually have faster ship construction beginning with the event starting. But we have the Altarian time tokens, and if you plan it all out, and we also have mark boxes available, which I don't quite see why they're in there, because you get more... Well, actually, let me put it this way. You get a box for hitting certain fleets that are easy to hit. However, when you hit that same target, you get the box, and you look at the price, and you get 20, 40,000 intel, and then the box in here costs 250, you can stick with hitting the other targets, and then you just purchase the other items in here, and ignore these. And the one that I would have liked to actually be in here is the carrier. I couldn't care less about any of these, especially the, the Cavalier. The carrier, the Sovereign, is the one I would have taken. Well, not the carrier. The Sovereign Dreadnought. Yes, I know it's a carrier, and I'll argue the point until the end of time that, it, that the weapons they've released for it is effectively a Dreadnought. Unless you have high shield bypass, and even then, if the person set it up to have heavy resistance to certain damage types, then you're going to have quite a fight on your hands. 
but for arm for the for the higher level armored builds and things like that this is going to be a decent event for a small bit we don't actually have credit items for any of the unique armors so the spectral through the plasma they're all reusable items but at least they're there spectral shells all of them everything that's armor and shield related is in here with the exception of specials and any type of weapon but this is the first time that I've seen the Altarian time tokens in anything but I just wanted to quickly get all of that out the Ashes event again it was a miss in my eyes it could have had more varied targets they could have actually implemented the Umbra targets into the fleet but well, they could have implemented them in as a target event and thing like that for everybody to be able to participate. However, there was one thing that I did notice. Let me actually... The requirements to build the tier 7.5, they actually went back down. So instead of requiring Ship Factory 13 and Ship Lab 12, you need 10 and 10. So this will be more readily available to the entire player base than the Altarian faction itself was. However, this group will be missing quite a bit. What do I mean by that? Well, the lack of shielding means that every, every time you get hit, unless you build your ship up to have heavy resistance against certain damage types, you only fight those certain targets, you're going to be seeing longer repair times than you may be used to. Well, partly. Shielding also adds repair time, which actually wasn't calculated um, the way you may think. And most of it's covered in the health as it takes damage, percentage of the shield damage. Well, not the shield's actual damage, because you can't take damage on the shield theoretically. It's just a shell, sort of say. But as you lose your health, that percentage of the repair time is added on. And again, I'll have to wait and see just how their fleets play out. I can't wait to see the destroyer and the carrier. Now, since they're, they are most likely going to be all straight up reworks of previous ships that have just been mutated. Oh, one more thing to go with it. I'm going to try and stay on top of information. The Ashes event. And, yep, there's no doubt this Phoenix frigate was derived from my old Blood Raven. And one person and one person alone has the Blood Raven, and we all know who that is. I honestly don't mind being able to get the ship, but I would have liked a little bit more remodeling work that could have gone into it to make the Blood Raven still stand out. I know this is a new tier, but it's almost the same ship, it's just a little bit of a change and whatnot. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at the targets for the upcoming mobilization. There's one change that I think everybody's going to be interested in, and I'll see what I can do about getting a second video out today covering this specific target. First off, deceivers are in there as always at the normal rates, and the others are also in there, and they're giving off exterminator boxes today, and the blitz is dropping the blue tail wing. Outriders. These have replaced the Vanguard fleets, as we can see. And with that being said, I'll have to wait to see how tough they are. But level 60 drops the now heavy Talonite plates. Eh, I would have much preferred the projectile. But starting from level 70 above, you get the Bastion Cruiser boxes, but you're not getting one, you're getting two. Two times Bastion Cruiser Mark II box. Two times, two times, two times. It's two times the boxes for all of them. And we're actually, I think I missed one. Nope, motherships are down here. All the standard boxes, with the exception of the Sovereign at the higher levels are only dropping at... they're all dropping two boxes instead of one. 
So that's something to look forward to. And I may hit a few motherships towards the end of the event. Not for the intel, but just for the boxes. Well, maybe a little bit for the intel. But I'm mainly going to be attacking the brigades and working on upgrading my paragon a little bit more. But let's go ahead and let's recommend targets based on what people have. Well, if you're going to be fighting these targets, then it's already a strong guess that you actually already have the Altarian technology, in which case then I'm most likely going to be inclined to believe that you use Bastions the same as everybody else does because of how overpowered and broken they were to begin with, and you just purchased or built in excess of them. So, depending on your fleet level, remember, average your fleet off. My level is level 99, however you average it... Yeah, <laughs> However, if you average the fleet, the actual level is more around level 70. So hit around level 70, you get up towards level 100, you're going to be closer to level 80, so hit level 80. And this is how I gauge targets. Now what do I mean by gauging? Gauging is typically around the area where you can take moderate damage for a decent reward, or take low damage for a decent reward. And in some cases, you actually can outclass your enemy, the AI, and you can take no damage. But that's about it, because I, I would mainly target the Outriders this time around. Because most of us, again, we use Bastions, so it would only make sense that we'd want to farm up the boxes for them. But that's going to be it for this video, everybody. If you have any questions, concerns, or would like to add any information, feel free to leave a comment below. If you like this video... Yeah, if you liked anything from this video, if you want to see more videos like this of just daily events and things like that, feel free to leave a like so I know that you guys like this type of content. And as always, subscribe for more. And again, there's more than just Vega on the channel. I play Star Wars, The Empire at War. I play Ark every once in a while. I play Pixar once in a while. There was a few times there was Spore that went up on the, cha the channel. Then we have They Are Billions. And I'll be slowly altering the content and trying to add more variety as I slowly go along. But for now, this is what we have. But, I'll see you all later, everybody. Well, I need to stop saying that. I'll see you all later, my precious little pack. Until then, stay safe out there in the void.